Hey, hon. So we're gonna talk about the biggest mistake that we think we made in putting this homestead together. Right. So, number one mistake for us in building this homestead, our, probably our top one, is poor fencing. Poor fencing. Poor fencing. Yeah. When you're on a budget and you're having to make just a lot of decisions because everything's from scratch, you kind of have to decide, you know, what are you going to put a lot of money toward really high quality? Um, items toward and what are you going to sacrifice and just go free and cheap and unfortunately we decided to kind of sacrifice a little bit by going cheap fencing and it's caused a lot of stress. <laughs> and really we didn't have the finances to go any other way really. Right. I mean we, we talked through this and I was like where else could we have cut finances out? Not, Not really, really anywhere. Not really anywhere. There's still hope for our fencing in the future. Yes. <laughs> We're going to be... Going forward, going we have a plan. Forward. Yeah. Because now we know, and that's one of the biggest deals, you guys, is know what animals you want, mm -hmm. know where you want them, so then you'll know exactly what kind of fencing you need in those spots. So if you're going to just have like cows, goats, sheep in certain areas, then you can just field fence those areas and, and barbed wire like two strands at the top. But if you're gonna have any kind of birds in there, you need different kind of fencing. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what, fencing is a big deal, you guys. Why is it a big deal? Because you are protecting your investment with your fencing. That's the biggest deal. You're protecting the animals that are in there, plus you'll protect areas like this. This is where our garden is. So you don't want animals to be able to get into here. So this is another way you're protecting your investment. So look at this fencing. This is between the mini orchard and the garden. I got all these pallets for free. So we did what we could do at the time. Free pallets, so we made pallet fencing. And it's been okay. This back fence was thrown together with some field fencing, some chicken wire, just whatever. Whatever we had. One of the problems with this though is like the gates. It's hard to get the gates right when you just start throwing stuff together. So should we give a few examples of the cheap thrown together fencing that we have and the problems we've had with them? Yes, let's do that. And then we'll share what we think would be the best fencing if you're going to do a sort of a permaculture style multi-species running in the same areas together polyculture polyculture yeah polyculture with the animals all sharing in a rotational way all sharing the same areas mm -hmm. so what are some examples of oh man i wish that didn't happen <laughs> well you already showed the pallets and the chickens could get right over those pallets so we yeah. had to put little strips of chicken wire and it just was really hard to figure out how to attach them and they over time have just kind of flopped over so some places they just start not, not doing a, anything <laughs> it's a hassle and it's a mess yeah it's ugly it is the pallets are kind of nice but the chicken wire mess is very ugly field fencing right without barbed wire. Our old cow that we sold jumped over that fence. Three times? I think three times, yeah. Like three times. Yeah. She would get a little nervous in the corral and not want to be there, so she'd jump over the fence. <laughs> it was crazy, we never expected that. Right. Dexter, she was a Dexter Guernsey. Dexter Guernsey mix. Uh -huh. I think part deer as well. And part deer. <laughs> or kangaroo. Could be. <laughs> yeah. 
And then in our chicken area, which you'll probably see later in this video, we use some free deer, plastic deer fencing. And unfortunately, well, it worked for a while, but then soon the chickens figured out how to just kind of work their way through that. And poor Josh, he's our son that takes care of the chickens. He has had to patch so many holes. <laughs> and now they're just, you'll see, they're everywhere. Our chickens are everywhere now. And we have chicken poo all over our patio, so. It's not acceptable. So we have a project today. <laughs> yep, we'll bring you along on that journey. What you doing up there? How are you going to get down? Okay, go ahead. We're going to go. <laughs> Good jump. Okay, another kind of fencing that we had, that we used and tried, was the movable electric fencing. We had it solar powered. We had a charger, um, solar panel to keep it electrified. And that didn't work for us, mainly because our, ro our soil is so rocky that to move that and then to drive each one of those in, it was just not feasible. I mean, it was, how many hours did it take me to move that thing? One space? Like half a day. Half a day. Because I wouldn't just have to do that. I would have to mow every single place where that fence was going to be. I would have to mow it, make strips so that the grass and stuff wouldn't short out the fencing. Without a lawnmower. <laughs> and I didn't have a lawnmower. That was not so awesome. That was for the goats. Actually, we will um, put a link to my story on that in uh, from the father's heart on the goats. So that was a fail, a fencing fail as well for us. But that was when we first got here, so we didn't know better. That's what from all of our research and what, you know, all the things we read and videos and stuff, everybody was saying that's the best stuff. So we went for it. Mm -hmm. It works for other people, but we just happen to have really terrible land for, <laughs> for that. Yeah, we grow really awesome Ozark potatoes here. <laughs> Rocks in the soil. <laughs> Another issue we've had because of not having proper fencing or the kind of fencing that we should have had from the start is um, our geese, when they had goslings this year, the little goslings got out of this uh, field fencing and uh, they went up to the neighbors and, and destroyed part of the neighbor's garden. I'll leave a link to the video about that. <laughs> had to get away from them, they're too noisy. But that's where we had to close them in so they wouldn't continue to go up to the neighbors and destroy the garden. They were getting out. Um, through both field fencing and just barbed wire fencing. So now we know when we got with goslings that we can't use the field fencing even for that. Um, we've got to come up with something different, which we'll share at the end of this video. And that way we'll be able to let our geese out where they should be on all this green pasture that we have. And oh, it'll make our lives so much easier, especially Nathan. He does the geese and he has to cut and carry greens to them every day and we're also having to give them extra store-bought feed uh, so we really want to get them back out on green pasture so here's our problem with the chickens so chickens all out and here's what they do right where we walk as Justin Rhodes would say chicken squat chicken squat Chicken squat, chicken squat, just chicken squat, chicken squat. We don't like stepping in that and dealing with that. So we're gonna try to collect all these chickens up, put them back in their area and see if we can figure out where they're getting out and try to patch it. Now they're hacking away a little bit to get to the chicken area a little better. Look at how tall these weeds are. Does stuff grow good here in Missouri? Yeah, a little too good, huh? Here's Joshy. Trying to get the chickens to go in. All right, Joshy refreshing the water in here. Try to make the chickens happy. 
You might put a dab of uh, apple cider vinegar in there. So in here we found three holes in the fencing that we plugged. Uh, one was over there, one behind the coop here, um, and then there was one right in the gate that Joshy repaired. There was one right there that Joshy repaired. So now we got pretty much all the chickens in here that need to be in here. Did we get them all, Joshy? I think so. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we'll see if they escape, and if they do, then we'll hopefully be able to track that better. So you all bet ready for the big reveal of what kind of fencing that we have decided that we need here. Are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. What kind of fencing do we need here, hon? Horse fencing. Horse fencing. <laughs> Because yeah. the opening in horse fencing is how big? It's a two inch by four inch. Two so. inch by four inch. So they'd have to be really small chicks, goslings, ducklings to get through that. Yep. So the goslings, when they're tiny, tiny like that, when they could get through, they'll pretty much stick with their parents. When they get yeah. old enough to venture out away from the parents, they'll be too big to get through. They won't even fit through. And then the ducklings and the chicks. They stay with their parents pretty good. Yeah, and we're gonna try and build little mobile nurseries for them eventually. How so. pretty is that sky? It's awesome. Pretty sky. Pretty sky, nice huge oak trees right here. We found today that there's some, Joshy's got some more chickies hatched. It's a stripey. Look at that cute little chicky. Oh, and there's Mama sitting. So part of what we're gonna do, we still have like that full roll of field fencing. We'll use that and what we'll do is we'll roll it out and we'll put it as a perimeter fence where the only ones that are going to have access to it will be uh, cows and goslings or cows and geese and what we can do is like the bottom third like the bottom third of the field fencing we can put chicken wire along there so that will stop the goslings from going through and then after that from there on out we're hoping to switch to the horse fencing and horse fencing for to the rescue our, for all of our paddocks that we're gonna be putting in the future. Cause I tell you, when you put up just pieces of fence, the time you spend repairing it and dealing with animals, busting in, animals breaking out. Going over. Going over, all <laughs> kinds of craziness. The time you spend and the energy you spend, and more than that, the stress that it causes. Yeah. Stress that it causes. If you get stressed by such things, like, <laughs> I do. <laughs> it's worth it to get the good stuff. Oh yeah, we are planning a Q&A at the end of this month. Kind of in conjunction with, we are anticipating that, that uh, here within the next week or so, we'll probably be up to about a thousand subscribers. Woohoo, yay, thank you. Yeah. We're excited about that. Yeah, very excited. <laughs> So in order to submit your questions that you want us to answer, please go to our channel and click on the about on our channel. And then in there, then click on send message. And then message us that way with your questions. So any questions you have about anything related to homesteading or our lives, it doesn't matter. Just ask a question and we'll try and answer as many as we can in a vlog at the end of the month. Okay, thank you for watching. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Best thing you can do to help us is share. And whatever you do, do it with your whole heart. Whole heart. <laughs>